Good evening, friends. Welcome to our midweek Bible study from Pacific Christian Center here in Santa Maria, California. I'm Pastor Lauren Hicks. Thank you so much for taking some time to join us for the study of God's Word. I hope that you have a Bible nearby. I hope that you have a notepad. Grab a notepad, a piece of paper, and a pen so that you can take some notes tonight as we study the Scripture together. You know, God's Word is rich. It is powerful. Every time we get into the pages of Scripture, we should open our ears and say, let the Spirit of God speak to my heart. And I know that tonight, God's going to speak to us as we study the Scripture together. We have been in a fascinating study of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount from Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 for a number of weeks now. We're probably about halfway through the study and uh, we're going verse by verse, doing a careful study of the Scripture. And tonight I think that you're going to be reminded of some things that you already know as a Christian, but I think tonight maybe also you're going to learn something new. So grab that Bible, grab a piece of paper, be, begin to write some things down as we study together. Now I want to invite you to come out and join us this Sunday at church here at Pacific Christian Center, our 9 a.m. service is right here in the church auditorium. Under our current restrictions, we can have 100 attendees in our service, and so plenty of room for physical distance in our auditorium. And I want to invite you to come and join us and be a part of our service. And then at 1045, once again, church on the lawn. Bring a lawn chair, bring a hat, come out and join us, bring a water bottle and join us. We were having a great time as we have church on the lawn during this uh, season where the weather is nice. And I know you want to come out and be a part of what the Lord is doing. Now this weekend, I want to invite you to come out because I have a special friend that's going to be here this weekend. My uh, good friend, my lifelong friend, Brian Webb, who's a missionary in the South Pacific Islands, is going to be here. He's going to wrap up our missions month here at Pacific Christian. And he is one of the best mission speakers that I have ever heard. And I, I want you to be here. I want you to hear his heart. I want you to hear the stories of how God has used him and his family to bring the message of Jesus to people who have never had access to the gospel. I know you're going to be glad that you came this weekend. So make plans, invite your family, invite some friends to come out and join us as we worship the Lord together this weekend. I always want to say thank you for your generous support of the work of the Lord here at Pacific Christian Center, especially for those of you who are part of our church family, for those of you who tithe uh, weekly, monthly on your income and regular supporters of the work of God. Thank you so much for being faithful and being a part of what God is doing. It's because of people like you who give faithfully, consistently that enables the work of the Lord not only to continue, but to advance as we share the hope of Jesus with our community and the nations of the world. And if during this Bible study you'd like to give, you can navigate over to pacificchristian.net. You can click on the Give tab and give online in that way. Thank you so much for your faithfulness and your generosity. Now let's pray tonight and we're going to jump right into the study of the Word of God. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, for many of us, today has been a very full day. It's been a long day. But tonight, Lord, we gather in our homes, we gather wherever we may find ourselves, whether it's watching on a phone, a laptop, a tablet, maybe watching on our television. Lord, we gather tonight across the city for the study of the Word of God. I pray that tonight you'd bring rest into our soul, bring rest into our physical bodies, Lord. I pray that our minds would be alert as we study the Word of God. But most of all, I pray that our ears would be open to hear the voice of God. Lord, maybe there's something very specific that you want to speak to each one of us tonight. We know, Lord, that every time that we get into the Scripture, we learn something. Lord, your word never returns empty. It never returns void. And so I know tonight, Lord, that there's a word that you have for each of us. Let our hearts be open to the word of God. I pray that tonight when this Bible study is over, Lord, that we'll take what we have learned and that we will apply it to our hearts and lives as followers of Jesus. And we ask this tonight in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen uh, and amen. Grab your Bible tonight and turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6. And in just a moment, we'll read verses 16 through 18. Tonight, as we continue working our way through these verses of Scripture, we've learned a lot already in chapter 6. We've talked about prayer a couple weeks ago. Pastor Linda uh, talked about prayer as Jesus gives us the Lord's Prayer. And then last week, Rick, our youth director, taught on forgiveness and how challenging it is for us to forgive others and recognizing that if we want God's forgiveness in our lives, the scripture says that we need to forgive those that offend us. Now, Jesus takes a turn here and he talks in the next few verses of scripture about fasting. And so tonight I want to talk about fasting and prayer, fasting and prayer. If I were to ask you the question tonight, out of all the many different types of spiritual disciplines there are, and you know, tonight if you were to take a piece of paper and a pen and write down all the different ways that you could grow in your faith, all the different ways that you could pursue the Lord, you could come up tonight with quite a list of 
spiritual disciplines and different ways that you could grow in your faith. If I were to ask you out of all the things that you listed on paper, which of them is the most difficult? I think that many of us would agree tonight that fasting is probably the most difficult spiritual discipline of all. And the reason is because fasting goes against one of our strongest desires, our strongest physical desires, and that is to feed ourselves. And it's something that we all do well. It's something that many of us do too well. It's something that we do at least three times a day. Fasting is that setting aside of food. Now, we know that as we read the scripture, and I did some study today to find out just how many times is fasting mentioned in the scripture and to look at all the different uh, times that the Bible talked about people fasting and why they fasted, because I wanted to really get my mind wrapped around this idea of fasting and why is fasting important? Why does Jesus call us to fasting in this passage of scripture? And I learned some things today. I learned that fasting is mentioned in scripture more than baptism. And I found that to be interesting. Fasting is mentioned in scripture as, as much as giving. And we know that giving is talked about a lot in scripture. So Fasting is something we see throughout the scripture, whether it's the Old Testament, the New Testament, we see it quite a bit. And some, some examples that I wrote down in scripture, we see Abraham's servant fasted while he was seeking for a bride for Isaac. And I thought maybe for some of you who are looking for a spouse, maybe fasting is something that you haven't tried. You might want to consider that. Moses fasted on several occasions. We know that Hannah fasted when she was asking the Lord to give her a child. We know that David fasted on many occasions. So did the prophet Elijah. Ezra fasted when he was mourning Israel's uh, faith, his unfaithfulness to God. We see that Esther fasted when she learned that the Hebrews were going to be threatened with extermination. When you get to the book of Daniel, we find that Daniel fasted many times. The people, even the cattle of Nineveh fasted when they heard that God was going to destroy Nineveh through the lips of the prophet Jonah. We get to the New Testament, we find that Paul fasted even before he was converted. We see that years later, he fasted when they appointed the elders of the churches. The Christians at Antioch fasted when they set off Paul and Barnabas on their missionary journeys. And of course, Luke chapter 4 tells us that Jesus fasted. So what is fasting? Let's just kind of get to the heart of it tonight. What is fasting? Because I hear a lot of people talk about fasting in a lot of different terms and many different ideas about fasting. But in scripture, we learn that fasting is not dieting. And fasting is not just a way you can skip some meals and lose some weight. Whenever fasting is referred to in the Bible, it is abstaining from food for the purpose of growing spiritually. Fasting is abstaining from food for the purpose of of growing spiritually. Now, if I were to ask you, if you were here in person, I were to ask you, how many of you want to grow spiritually? Let me see your hand. Hands would go up here tonight. I know you want to grow spiritually. Maybe put that in the comments. Let us know tonight that you're with us. Let us know that it's your desire to grow spiritually. Well, fasting is one of the ways, it's one of the spiritual disciplines that God has given us to pr produce spiritual growth in our hearts and our lives. Now, fasting is mentioned many times in Scripture, but let's talk about this passage of Scripture, the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus gives us here. If you have your Bible, verse 16 of Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says that when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do. And he, of course, is referring there to these Pharisees, these religious leaders that we've been talking about. So don't look somber, don't put on a show, for they disfigure their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Notice verse 17, he says, but when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And so we have a scenario here where these Pharisees, these religious leaders who Jesus has already been calling out in the Sermon on the Mount because they put on this external show. We talked about the heart a few weeks ago, how that their hearts were empty, but on the outside, you know, they tried to keep every law and they wanted to come off to the crowd as some type of super spiritual leader. Look at me, look what I'm doing. And the Bible tells us that they would pray in the street corner with kind of flowing language so that people could think, wow, look how 
spiritual they are, look how eloquent they are in their prayers. And Jesus says they do the same thing when they fast. They go around kind of mopey, their head is down. When somebody would ask them, hey, are you feeling okay? What's going on? And they would say, well, you know, today I'm fasting. And people would think, wow, look how spiritual they are because they're fasting. And Jesus said, when we fast, it's not to put on a show for others. In fact, it's no, but, no one's business besides your own family that you're fasting. This is to be private between you and the Lord. And so Jesus said, hey, you know, comb your hair, wash your face so that don't go around downcast so that people would notice uh, that you're hungry that day or you went without a meal and you're not feeling your best. And, and so the father who is unseen sees what you do in secret. And the scripture says here, it's just a powerful verse of scripture, verse 18, that the father who sees what is done in secret will reward you openly. So let's talk about fasting and some practical benefits and then some spiritual benefits. We know that uh, fasting is good for us physically. Uh, you may have uh, read about this. You may have had a doctor talk to you about this, that there is, there is some physical benefits to fasting, whether it is the uh, removing of some toxins, that clean, kind of cleaning out our system or giving your digestive system a rest, that there are some physical benefits to doing, out of, doing without food for a short period of time. But the main benefit of fasting is, of course, spiritual. And that's what we're referring to tonight. When we talk about the spiritual benefits of fasting, we could probably make a list. But the primary thing that fasting does for us is that it teaches us self-control. We, uh, we are controlling our physical appetite. We are setting aside that physical meal for a spiritual meal. We are, we are focused for a certain amount of time on Christ. We are not distracted by the temporary pleasures of this life. We're not distracted by the temporary pleasures of food primarily. But when we fast, and the scripture talks about going into the prayer closet, which simply means that we get alone with God. We, we get away from the distractions. We get away from uh, obligations. You set aside some time. You get away from the television. You get away from the internet. You get away from social media. We get away from all those things so that we cannot be distracted. We can focus our attention on the Lord. And I think that one of the things that fasting does for us is that it increases our spiritual alertness. Somehow that when we fast, our ears become open to the voice of God. That's why if you're seeking for direction for your life, if you're praying and asking God for clarity in your life, maybe you're in a confusing season. Maybe it seems like the future is a fog. Maybe you're praying for God's will and you need to know what the next step of your life is. Fasting is one of the best things that you can do because it removes all those distractions and opens your ears so that you can hear the voice of God. Richard Foster, in one of his books, he wrote this statement. He says, our human cravings and desires are like a river that tends to overflow its banks. Fasting helps keep them in the proper channel. More than any other discipline, fasting reveals the things that control us. And this is why fasting is so difficult for us, right? Because we are controlled by our physical appetites. And fasting brings things like this to light. In fact, some of, the, some of the carnal, fleshly things that we still wrestle with in our lives, when we fast, the Holy Spirit tends to bring those things to light. For example, one of the things that comes to light during our times of fasting is pride. In fact, David said in Psalm 69, verse 10, he says, I humbled my soul with fasting. And it's amazing the things that surface when we are fasting. Some of the things that we struggle with, some of the things that control us, things like anger and bitterness and envy and jealousy and unforgiveness and fear and strife. If those things are within us, they surface during our fasting. And the Holy Spirit is so faithful in this time that we've dedicated to the Lord to strengthen our spiritual man, to help break those bondages in our lives and to help us find freedom from these things of the flesh that control us so that we can walk in freedom in Christ. Now, Someone asked the question once, is fasting a command? Pastor Lauren, do we have to fast? I don't like to fast. Can I just be honest with you? I don't like to fast either. Uh, how about the rest of you watching online? Do you like to fast? Fasting is not something enjoyable. In fact, I'm not sure if I've ever had a person come to me and say, you know, one of my favorite things about Christianity is fasting. I love fasting. The fasting is amazing. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that. Fasting is difficult and we don't necessarily enjoy it. So it brings the question, do we have to do this? Is this something that is required of us in Scripture? And the answer to that is no. Fasting is not a command in the Bible. Jesus does not, even in this passage of Scripture, does not order us uh, to fast. But there are several passages of Scripture 
where we, we see that Jesus assumes that we're going to fast. That this is going to be something that, that followers of Jesus recognize is valuable as a spiritual discipline and something that will help them grow. For example, Jesus does not say in this passage of Scripture, if you fast, here's how you should do it. He says, when you fast. And so Jesus is assuming that for followers of Christ, those of us who are sincere and want to grow in our faith, that fasting is something that we're going to do uh, from time to time. Now, there are in Scripture some different types of fasting, and I, and I want to bring some clarity to this because I hear people today talking about different types of fasting. Fasting, according to the Scripture, is the abstaining from food. Now, that doesn't mean, <clears throat> excuse me, that doesn't mean that there might not be some other types of fasting that might be helpful for your life. I, I've heard people say, you know what, I'm going to fast from television for a week. Now, if, you're, if your television is controlling you and and you just feel kind of consumed by it. You find yourself watching it all the time. You find yourself wasting time when you could be doing something that's more productive. Maybe you want to consider giving up a week of television. Maybe spend some extra time with prayer instead of watching television. Maybe you want to fast the internet. Maybe you want to fast social media. And I've been thinking lately about resisting the temptation to look at my phone. You ever, you ever feel that? Just every, anytime you just have a moment, uh, if you're waiting anywhere, we pull our phone out and look at it and and I don't want to be, I'm like you, I don't want to be controlled by my phone. And so I'm thinking and praying about resisting the temptation to look at my phone in those moments. So there are some different types of fasts that you might want to consider. But this spiritual fast is the abstaining from food. And we see in scripture that the most common type of abstaining from food is just completely fasting, completely abstaining from any type of physical food, uh, with the exception of that you would drink water. And I wouldn't recommend, and neither would your doctor recommend, that you would fast uh, and not drink water. Now, if you're going to fast, we start small. If you've never fasted before, practical advice is, in fact, you probably should talk to your physician before uh, you fast at all. And certainly, if you have any kind of medical conditions, you want to talk to your doctor about it. But you want to start small. If you've never fasted before, don't say, hey, you know, I'm going to fast for 21 days. Maybe start with a meal. Okay, let's start small. And then maybe eventually you fast a day or maybe fast three days eventually, something of that nature and give that time to the Lord in prayer. We also see another type of fast in scripture in the book of Daniel. And in fact, you may have heard people refer to this as the Daniel fast. And scripture says in Daniel chapter 10, that for three weeks he ate no delicacies, meat, or wine for three days. And so this was a fast where he only ate fruits and vegetables. And this has been very popular in churches in recent years, especially starting the new year. Many people do 21 days of only fruits and vegetables and will abstain from that. And so you can pray about that, consider what the Lord would have you to do. But fasting in Scripture is, is the abstaining from food for a spiritual benefit. Now, the main teaching in these verses of Scripture that Jesus gave, gives us in Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 through 18, is the idea that fasting should be done in secret. That's the main thought, the main thrust of what Jesus is giving us. Now, we have other references to fasting in Scripture, and Jesus talks about fasting in other places as well. But in these verses of Scripture, Jesus is cautioning us against hypocrisy. He's cautioning our hearts on, uh, on uh, kind of exhibiting this type of spiritual superiority over others and letting people know, making people think, wow, you know, it, must, it must be wonderful to be like Pastor Lord. I wish I could be like Pastor Lord who fasts all the time. I wish I could do that. I wish I could be like that person, that guy or that girl who, who's so spiritual. Jesus is cautioning us against it. Really, the root of all that, isn't it pride? Pride is the root of all that. And so God is guarding our hearts, cautioning our hearts, against the sin of pride. He's also letting us know that for fasting to be a spiritual discipline, it must include prayer. Now that's a very important point. You might wanna write that down tonight. If you fast and you don't pray, you're not fasting, you are dieting, okay? You're just abstaining from food. You're skipping a meal, maybe you lost a pound, uh, and that might be good for some of us, but that's not fasting. For fasting to be a spiritual discipline, and that's what we're talking about tonight, it must include prayer. And when we talk about prayer, I know there can be a range of emotions that come into our hearts and our minds. Sometimes there are negative things. Some of us feel guilty because we're not praying more. Some of us feel frustrated because we're not getting an answer to prayer. Maybe some of us, honestly, we feel just uh, apathetic towards prayer or fearful towards prayer. Others of us, maybe when you consider prayer, you think of prayer in a more 
positive way. Maybe you have joy. Maybe there's an answer to prayer. Maybe uh, prayer uh, brings comfort and spiritual growth. So I don't know where you're at tonight uh, as you think about prayer, but it's so important for us to understand that when we fast, we must pray and seek the Lord. One reason that fasting and prayer are so important, the reason they're so valuable, this combination of these two things, fasting and prayer, is because they are life-changing. And the first thing that fasting and prayer does, the first thing it changes is it changes us. Now, I know that when we go to the Lord in prayer, we're often tempted to fast and pray for the other needs, right? Lord, I want to see you do this in that person's life, or my child has a need, or maybe you're fasting and pray for the nation, or whatever some external need. And that's really wonderful for us to do that. But the first thing that fasting changes is it changes us. Prayer changes our attitude. It changes the way we feel about situations. How many times have you and I felt hopeless about a situation, but when we prayed, we felt less hopeless? How many times when you came to a prayer meeting, maybe physically, emotionally, you were tired, you didn't want to come to the prayer meeting, but when you left the prayer meeting, you said, thank God I came because I feel so much better. Prayer and fasting changes us. And it also changes us because when we're in the presence of God, it causes us to be more like Jesus. Fasting and prayer changes us, but it also changes the situations. How many of you believe tonight that when we fast and pray, that it moves the heart of God, that God, this great God hears us and that he answers prayer and that he responds to our prayers and to our faith. I can't imagine that if you believe that God answered prayer, I can't imagine that you would not be a person who prayed. We pray and we seek God because we know that God moves. In fact, James chapter five, verse 16 says, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and it's effective. That's a great verse of scripture to memorize. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and it is effective. Someone has wisely said that when we work, we work. But when we pray, God works. His supernatural strength is available to us when we pray. I've seen what I can do and I've seen what you can do and I appreciate what we can do. And I think God appreciates it. But how many of you tonight want to see what God can do? And when we pray, when we seek the Lord, when we fast, when we get on our knees before God, we get to see what our heavenly father can do. And we're reminded that there is nothing that is too hard for our God. As we look at the teaching of Jesus and the gospels, we learn some things. And I want to give the four things to you quickly. If you have your pen and paper, you want to write these down. Four things quickly tonight that we learn about fasting and prayer from Jesus in the Gospels. The first, we see that Jesus teaches us that fasting and prayer should be done regularly. That when we fast and pray, it should not be something that, you know, I, I know I never get around to it. I want to do it. I hope someday to do it. I'd like to be more disciplined to do it. But it is something that we schedule. It's something that we are faithful with in our lives. And we see in scripture, even back in verse five, when Jesus was talking about prayer and he gives us the Lord's prayer, he doesn't say, if you pray, he says, when you pray. And now in these verses of scripture, he doesn't say, if you fast, he says, when you fast, Jesus is assuming that his disciples and Hey friends, that's you and I, right? We're his disciples that we would be people that would pray and seek the Lord. So let's make it a part of our regular life. It takes intention to do this. It won't happen by accident. You don't want to look back at your life and say, you know what? I wished I'd done things different. Today's the day that we can make some decisions to begin pursuing God, seeking God with all of our heart. Second, we learn from Jesus that fasting and prayer should be done in secret. It should be done secretly. And this is, of course, in verses 16 through 18, the main thrust of what Jesus is referring to, that we don't put on a show. We're not trying to impress others that we're in this spiritual conversation with God. We don't, we're not trying to communicate to others how holy we are. Through prayer, we communicate to God how holy he is. Can somebody say amen uh, to that? Prayer is not a spectator sport. It's not something that we engage to give signals to others as to how spiritual we are. And Jesus says that we are to get alone with God in prayer. And this, of course, is the removing of distractions. Uh, maybe you're having trouble praying. Maybe you need to get away from family for a short period of time, maybe get away from the dog, get away from the phone, get away from social media, get away from anything that would distract you so that you could have some time, some quiet time with the Lord in prayer. And the third thing Jesus teaches us in the gospels about fasting and prayer is that it should be done sincerely. It should be done sincerely. It should be done from the heart. Now we have talked quite a bit already in the Sermon on the Mount about the heart because Jesus 
He doesn't deal with the surface things. He goes right to the core of who we are. And so he says that when you and I pray as his disciples, when we fast, make sure that you're doing it sincerely. Uh, make sure that you're not doing it hip hip hypocritically like these religious leaders, but do it sincerely with all your heart because you want to know God. You want to pursue Him in His presence. You want to draw closer to Him. You have sincere needs that you want to see God meet in your life. And every time we go to the prayer closet, we can be assured that God will be there. God will show up. So let's make sure that we pray sincerely. And the fourth thing we learn from Jesus in the Gospels about fasting and prayer is that it should be done specifically. Let me tell you something tonight, friend. It does not offend God for you and I to pray specifically. I believe that the scripture says we should bring our needs before God. Hebrews says we can come before God's throne with confidence that he hears us. He welcomes us. Isn't that amazing that God welcomes us into his presence, that we can bring our needs and our petitions uh, before the Lord. And I don't think it offends God at all that we pray specifically so many times we pray in a general sense. We say, God bless America. God, God bless Santa Maria. God bless our church. God bless my family. And we pray uh, kind of shallow, uh, just very general, very broad prayers. But maybe tonight God's speaking to your heart and mind about learning to pray specifically. And I, I wrote some things down uh, just in my own list as I was thinking about this tonight. And we'll close with this tonight in this Bible study. But here are some reasons. And maybe tonight you write some of these down uh, as I'm sharing them, and maybe the Holy Spirit, we conclude this time, God will give you some of, the, of your own things that you need to be praying about, things that the Spirit of God is calling you to pray and to fast and to seek the Lord about. But some things I wrote down today, we can, we can fast and pray for closeness to God because we're hungry for God, we're thirsty for God. Uh, maybe you want to humble yourself before the Lord. We can fast and pray for blessing when we are undertaking a, a particular responsibility. We know in Luke chapter 4, Jesus fasted and prayed 40 days before he began his ministry. Maybe you're involved in a ministry. You want to see God move. You want to see God's blessing. You want to see God's power revealed. Fasting and prayer is the key to that. We can fast and pray for a spiritual breakthrough. In fact, the scripture talks about some things don't happen unless we fast and pray. Maybe you have a child, a grandchild that's away from the Lord. Maybe the Holy Spirit tonight is speaking to us about fasting and praying that there will be a spiritual breakthrough in their life, that the chains that bind them will be broken, that they will be set free in Jesus' name. We can fast and pray for deliverance from recurring sin. Maybe you have a particular sin that's a struggle in your life and you want freedom. Have you fasted? Have you prayed? Have you sought the Lord for victory in your life? We can fast and pray for revival, for repentance. We can fast and pray for the lost. We can fast and pray for wisdom and guidance in our decisions. We can fast and pray about the future. God, what next steps do you have for our lives and for our church? We can fast and pray for special needs. Maybe there is an illness. Maybe there's a financial need. Whatever it may be, we can bring it to the Lord. We can fast and pray for people that we love. Maybe you need to fast and pray for your marriage. Maybe your marriage is not as strong as it needs to be. Maybe there are spiritual attacks against your marriage or your children. And you want to see God's protection. You want to see God move in your own home and in your own family. We can fast and pray and ask God to do these things. And certainly we can fast and pray for our church, for our pastors, for our leaders. We can fast and pray for God to move in our city. We have an election coming up just in now less than two weeks. We can fast and pray that God would move, that God's will would be done in our nation. I hope tonight that as we walk through these three verses of scripture about fasting and prayer, and we have talked about the practical side of the benefits of fasting, that maybe tonight the Lord has spoken to your heart, that this would be a spiritual discipline that we would begin slowly to implement, to put into our hearts and lives. Can I be honest with you as a pastor now for many years, uh, I can say with, uh, with a fair amount of certainty that fasting is a spiritual discipline that most Christians never practice. But we have it in Scripture. Think about it. Jesus talked about it a lot. Scripture talks about fasting even more than baptism. So this is something that we want to consider. I pray that the Spirit of God speaks to your heart tonight about seeking the Lord through fasting and prayer. And let's see a breakthrough. Let's see God move. And if you have a, a breakthrough, if you have a testimony, if you have a praise report, let me know. We want to celebrate with you what God is doing. With this great God we serve, he hears and answers prayer. Let's be sure to seek him tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word that speaks to our hearts in such a powerful way. Tonight, as we've talked about this topic of fasting and prayer, I pray that your spirit has ministered to us. I pray, Lord, that you have given us a specific word 
I pray that this would be a, a practice, a spiritual discipline that we would begin to implement in our lives as we pursue you. May we hunger for you. May we thirst for you. May we desire you more than anything in this world. And I pray, oh God, that as we dig into the word of God, as we become people of prayer and fasting, we'll experience you in ways we never had before. Bless your church tonight, we pray. Until we come together again, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Hope to see you on Sunday.